Hey everybody, this is Ryan Baus with the Abolitionist Society of Chicago. Um, I've been reading uh, this uh, biography on William Lloyd Garrison, and uh, I've just come across some amazing uh, material on uh, just the correlations between the abolitionist societies and the foundations of them and how they developed as, as to what we see here with Abolish Human Abortion. and. Uh, how we are developing and growing and building up, and the correlations are, are just uh, staggering. Um, but so I, I caught something in here that really rocked my world, and uh, Garrison was uh, speaking about the colonization societies. And, and so for a bit of history, colonization societies were a group that recognized um, that slavery was wrong, and in order to end slavery, they decided that the best thing to do was to send all the slaves back to, um, back to um, Africa and to ju just export the slaves, basically. So the idea here was, well, there will be no slavery if we send the slaves back home. Um, and now the, one of the problems that was in this was that they wanted to send all black people, so even the free black people in the northern states would be getting forced back home. Um, and, and so this really was, when you look at the uh, historical timeline here, this was the pro-life movement of their day. Uh, they believed in finding workarounds and they believed in finding middle ground and they believed in covering over the problem without actually eradicating the problem. And so Garrison had something really amazing to say on this subject. Um, like many of the abolitionists, um, myself included, we started off as members of the pro-life movement, and we recognized the evil, we recognized the wrong that was in the pro-life movement, and so we moved on and we moved out of there and we became abolitionists. Garrison was the same way. About a year before he wrote this, um, uh, this quote to paper, he gave a speech on the 4th of July about colonization, about how it was what we had to do and the only way to save the slaves. <coughs> so uh, Garrison says here, um, <coughs> as he speaks on the societies, it imperatively and effectually seals up the lips of a vast number of influential and pious men who, for fear of giving offense to those slaveholders with whom they associate and thereby leading, oh, I'm sorry, I lost my place there, but thereby leading to a dissolution of the compact, dare not expose the flagrant enormities of the system of slavery nor denounce the crime of holding human beings in bondage. They dare not lead to the onset against the forces of tyranny, and if they shrink from the conflict, how shall victory be won? And so here he's recognizing that basically the colonization movement is silencing the, the, they're silencing themselves because they don't want to offend anyone, they don't want to come on too strongly. Um, so he continues here, I do not mean to avert that their sermons or, address, or addresses or private conversations, they never allude to the subject of slavery, for they do so frequent, frequently, or at least every 4th of July. Wow. If I ever hear another time that the abolitionists of today are not in any way, shape, or form comparable to the abolitionists of slavery and how we have no clue what we're talking about, historically, we're identical here. What have we called out over and over and over again? One of the most attacked projects that we have is the Church Repent Project. And we call out to churches and say, giving a Sanctity of Life sermon once a year is not doing it. And what was William Lloyd Garrison, the father of the abolitionist societies, the father of the anti-slavery societies, what is he saying here? He's saying, sure, they talk about it at least every 4th of July. And he goes on there, he says, but my complaint is that they content themselves with representing slavery as an evil, a misfortune, 
a calamity which has been entailed upon us by former generations and not as an individual crime, embracing its folds robbery, cruelty, oppression, and piracy. They do not identify the criminal. They make no direct, pungent, earnest appeal to the conscience of men stealers. Again, just the correlations here blow my mind. From one piece of writing that Garrison put down, that they content themselves with representing slavery as an evil, a misfortune. And what do you hear out of the pro-life movement today? We, we try to talk about abortion. We say abortion is sin. Abortion is murder. Those who have abortions are murderers. Those who perform abortions are murderers. And we are the bad guys. We are, are these divisive, evil people because we are calling a spade a spade. We are calling sin a sin, a problem that over and over again the abolitionists of slavery had to deal with. They do not identify the criminal. They make no direct, pungent, earnest appeal to the conscience of men stealers. Now, I don't know about you, but I've spent a lot of time out there sidewalk counseling. And I did most of it when I was in the pro-life movement. And here's what I saw. I saw men and women saying, Ma'am, you're a victim. Please don't become a victim. Don't get hurt. Don't go through the emotional trauma that you're going to go through. And when I showed up as an abolitionist and when I, when I gave my life to God and to his work and I gave up the ways of man and I decided that I no longer would follow the world in doing wickedness, I'm now the bad guy. Stop calling them sinners. Stop using the word murder. Stop telling them that they're killing children. Stop telling them that they need to repent. The pro-life movement has been dead from the day it started. And Garrison told us, hundreds of years ago, Garrison wrote down why the pro-life movement was dead. Garrison saw the same thing that Toby Harmon, Russell Hunter, Tim Locklear, that, that every abolitionist today sees that as long as the pro-life movement continues to say that sin is not really sin, that they call murderers victims, as long as they play this compromise game that makes them feel good about themselves because they stand up for something, but allows 3,500 children to be murdered every day without any actual direct action, as long as money is poured into these companies that make their livelihood off of hopefully one day after their retired ending abortion, as long as millions of people sign petitions that say that it's okay to have a slave as long as they're under 30, or I'm sorry that it's not okay to kill children after 20 weeks, as long as we keep saying that as long as the baby can't feel pain, it's okay, then we're standing with the movement that said as long as a black man is above a shade of this line, then it's okay to own him as a slave. As long as we say that if the mother looks at an ultrasound first, then we can't stop her anymore it's okay because she saw the baby first, then we're standing with those people who said that as long as a slave owner owns a Bible and here's the truth that they can do as they please and nobody's going to stop them. You see, I see more and more every day the things that Garrison talked about when he spoke and he said that it wasn't the South that he was concerned with but the North because the inaction and the apathy of those in the North, those who claimed that they were against slavery but stood against him when he tried to end slavery, those are the people that he recognized were the worst and those are the people that we see. As long as the church is apathetic, children will be sacrificed in this nation. 
as long as Christians are not being a salt and a light and proclaiming the gospel into the world, and especially into those who would sacrifice their children or who would take a bribe to sacrifice others' children, abortion will remain legal. And as long as there is a movement that exists that brings in millions of dollars a year to support the legalization of child sacrifice while pretending to end it, abortion will remain legal. We need to put an end to the pro-life movement. We need to end the colonization societies of today, those who refuse to call a spade a spade. Jesus gave us a very specific command relating to this. And I know that somebody's going to tell me that this is out of context, but honestly, you're not theologically correct, and I know that. Jesus said, let your yeas be yea, yea, and let your nays be nay, nay. Let your yes be an absolutely yes, and let your no be an absolutely no. Be a man of your word, or a woman of your word. Have the character to say, I am either for it or against it, because if you stand in the middle, you are lukewarm, and God will spit you out of his mouth. And to say that it's okay to murder a child at a certain point because we're going to rescue the ones after that point is lukewarmness of the greatest degree. God will spit you out of his mouth. He will reject you. And you will never be successful in ending abortion. You will only encourage it, endorse it, and help it to grow.